As the National Ski Patrol celebrates its 70th anniversary, it has 10 divisions with more than 26,000 members, serving at over 400 ski areas. While much has changed, the mission and foundations of this organization remain as solid bedrock for the future. But where did it all come from? raging in Europe. Minnie Dole was a great student of history and he watched the success the Finns were having fighting the Russians on the ground using ski troops. It was right here in this Adirondack camp. Dad read how the Finns decimated the Russians using skis and guerrilla tactics. Dad became convinced that the mountain troops were important to the U.S. war effort and decided to take his plan to Washington, a Herculean task. Of course, Minnie was right. The Europeans had mound troops, and the enemy had mound troops. We're going to have to contest them somewhere. And so he lobbied the military, who initially were not too open to his suggestion, but Dole was incredibly persistent. Finally, connections landed him in a meeting with a top man, General Marshall, the chief of staff of the U.S. Army. Dad must have made quite an impression because the meeting led to the formation of the 10th Mountain Division. Not only that, but the NSPS would play a major role. These are the United States Mountain Troops. That first batch, where everybody was an outdoor person. Rock climbers, skiers, had been used to the mountains as part of our youth. I arrived in the barracks and there was one bed that was already made up with shoes shined underneath and so forth. And I said, whose bed is this? And uh, the soldier said, that's your squad leader, Leon Goodman, who was a great racer and so forth from Sun Valley. We could see right away that we were among, you know, these famous skiers. At that point, they formed the mountain training group and all of our better skiers went to the mountain training group. Gordon Wren, Friedel Pfeiffer, Tony Matt, and so on. And their job was to train the next level of instructors, and I was one of those. And th this is a, uh, a good point where uh, the early pioneers, like Minnie Dole, should be congratulated, because by and large, there were a lot of very fine American skiers like Leon Goodman and Litchfield. We learned a lot from guys like that. So we did rock climbing, skiing, living in the snow, making snow caves. And of course they did the famous artillery versus avalanche test. And along with these skills came an appreciation for the honed application of teamwork, tempered by self-reliance. The end of World War II offered both a corps of men trained to operate in the mountains and a surplus of ski equipment. Out of Dad's office on Lexington Avenue in New York, he screened some 26,000 men. At one point, I was told, the 87th Regiment had the highest IQ of any Army unit and had the highest death toll of any division. The tale of the 10th doesn't end with World War II because those folks were the heart and soul of the mountain world. So they came back and their love for the sport, their love of the outside set the tone and lit the fire of uh, ski area development uh, uh, in the late 40s and into the 50s. Many of the men coming out of the 10th wanted to live in the mountains and sought a way of making a living from skiing or the outdoors. The effect of this was to establish a reservoir of expertise in skiing that served over the next half century as a network that would, ski area by ski area, cause the American ski industry to bloom.